So we should talk a little bit about Robert Park also. He came up with the ideas called the central characteristics of social life, which were essentially these four characteristics of uh, how groups would assimilate together, how they would come together as one. Now it's important to note that Park was a member of the Chicago School in the early 1900s in the U.S. and he made his observations during an immigrant wave into Chicago. Many different immigrant groups were flooding into Chicago when he was doing his field work there. And so he used conflict theory to analyze the conflict among all of these many ethnic groups that were um, setting up different ethnic enclaves around and in the city of Chicago. And so while his work is considered a part of or a type of conflict theory, his analysis was different than Marx. Marx concentrated on class conflict, where Park concentrated on ethnic conflict. So you can see where Park would have taken the very origins of conflict theory and pushed the boundaries just a little bit further. And remember, as I've said now several times, that's exactly what we want a good social theorist to do. Take the foundations of a solid theory and push that boundary just a little bit. So let's see what Robert Park came up with when he made his observations about ethnic conflict. So the characteristics that Park came up with were competition, conflict, accommodation, and assimilation. And he said that these four characteristics will happen when ethnic groups come into contact with each other. The first is competition, and this is very impersonal, so it's more about the structure than it is about the individual. He thinks of competition as a fundamental form of human action. He thinks that because we're always in a state where we're trying to do what's in our own best interest, our self-preservation, competition has to be a fundamental part of how we behave. And so he says that this competition essentially determines our position in the structure of society. Are we able to compete for those scarce resources? And if we are, where does that help us land with regard to the positions of other groups in society? The second stage he sees as conflict, and here he talks about a more personal point of view. He says when competition becomes overt, when we actually start to be able to articulate what it is that other people have that we want, conflict starts to begin. This determines your place as compared to other people. Not groups, but your individual place. And so this conflict is a very personal type of action. In this phase, status, subordination, superordination, and control are distinctive characteristics of what happens to you and what happens to other people with regard to when that conflict occurs. The third part, he says, is accommodation. And this is a temporary phase for him. He says that at this point, the conflict that people are having with each other starts to cease and laws and rules start to regulate groups of people. He says that accommodation is a phase that is very easily disrupted due to hostile elements in different groups who come into contact with each other. And what's interesting about accommodation is that, Park says, as conflict starts to disappear as an overt action, it remains on the picture as a very subtle sort of latent force with regard to maintaining the structure of society. The fourth step is assimilation. And he sees this as a fusion of persons and groups. So once we come out of that accommodation category, here we truly assimilate to each other. Attitudes, experiences, and history are shared, and we develop a common culture that works for all of us. The assumption of a common heritage is also a characteristic of this particular category. 
The final part of assimilation is a community of common purpose and actions that emerges. And so while he says that competition and conflict don't necessarily cease here and individual differences are still obvious, he says that there is enough unity of experience and commonality here for us to want to act together. And again, I want you to think about this in terms of that moment in time, the historical context. What was going on in the early 1900s in Chicago? Well, the city was being built. Uh, the economy was booming. Many different groups were moving in and having to figure out how to live in America. And so you can see where these four attributes or characteristics may have made a lot of sense in Robert Park's time. Do they make sense for today? Well, that's a question I'll let you ponder. All right, I hope this helps. Take care.